Hey, what's up folks, how's it going this watch? Hope you guys are all doing well. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the new generation MacBook Pro powered by the M1 Pro chip. We have the 14.2 inch version and we're gonna be specifically doing a head-to-head -head comparison between the 13 inch previous generation MacBook Pro powered by the first gen M1 chip. Now the upgrades on the new 14 and 16 inch generation MacBook Pros is probably the most significant that we've seen on the MacBook Pro lineup since the original kind of unibody design where the internal processing capabilities of the new M1 Pro and M1 Max have significantly improved from the already relatively fast first generation M1 processor but they've actually taken some steps backwards from a design perspective. Firstly in terms of ports and connectivity options we have the SD card reader and HDMI connect connection back onto the MacBook Pros like the old school generation. Beyond that, you still have a three separate Thunderbolt 4 connections slash USB-C connections, as well as a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And they brought back the magnetically attaching MagSafe power connection, which is great in the sense that you don't have to sacrifice a, a Thunderbolt connection to actually power and charge your battery. Unlike the previous generation 13 inch MacBook Pro, which really only had two Thunderbolt Four connections. Furthermore, the more squared off boxier shape of the outer shell definitely harkens back to the early 2000s PowerBook design that later became the first generation MacBook Pros and is definitely a good homage to that famous design that everyone knows and loves. Now with the accommodation of the thinner bezels on the 14 inch compared to the 13 inch, the overall footprint of both PCs hasn't really changed drastically. The 14 inch being about eight millimeters wider and about nine millimeters deep Deeper, and the thickness is also very similar as well. Both are 15 millimeters. Weight-wise, the 14-inch has gone up 200 grams, weighing 1.6 kilos versus 1.4 kilos on the previous generation. Moving forward, another change is regarding the built-in speakers on both platforms with the new generation having significant upgrades and having six high-fidelity speaker system with force canceling woofers compared to stereo speakers on the 13-inch MacBook Pro, uh, which which were actually pretty decently sounding, had a good amount of amplitude as well, but compared to the six speaker system on the 14 inch, they definitely don't deliver the same level of dynamic range, low end punch on the bass frequencies, and definitely don't project the same level of volume in larger spaces or rooms. And if you're listening to music or any other audio source from videos, it's definitely nicer to share that content with uh, many other people thanks to the speaker system on the new generation laptop. Now another slight difference on the newer generation MacBook Pros is now we have a 1080p 30fps front facing FaceTime camera which hasn't really changed too much from an aspect ratio it's still quite boxy same overall focal length which is perfect for video conferencing and things like that but definitely a difference in terms of video quality take a look okay so now we switch over to the 720p 30fps FaceTime camera found on the previous generation MacBook Pros and indeed many of the older generation MacBooks have been utilizing this camera for god knows how many years and it definitely needed that upgrade not only can you see that the dynamic range is better it doesn't blow up the highlight information the shadow details better colors are definitely looking better as well and obviously with that greater resolution comes better clarity and sharpness super important these days when everyone's doing remote work and more and more video conferencing now in terms of the uh, microphone configuration we have a triple array with a directional beam foaming pattern so it does a good job in terms of capturing your voice with a low signal to noise ratio. As far as I can tell, the microphone quality is the same on both laptops. There is, however, as we mentioned before, a pretty big difference from a video standpoint. Now, in terms of battery, the capacity has gone up quite a bit at 70 watt hours on the 14 inch versus 58.2 watt hours. Now, in spite of the smaller capacity, according to Apple, the 13 inch should actually get a better battery life up to 17 hours of wireless web, 20 hours of video playback versus on the 14 inch you're looking at 11 hours of wireless web use and 17 hours of video playback now we did our own battery life drain test basically playing a QuickTime video on a loop 50 percent brightness with the wireless antennas off including wi-fi bluetooth things like that and simply measured the runtime which was 15 hours 12 minutes on the 14 inch macbook pro and the 13 inch macbook pro got an impressive 23 hours and 25 minutes moving forward let's talk about the keyboard and trackpad combination which are actually quite similar on both firstly they're both using the force touch trackpad with the haptic 
feedback system and multi-touch capabilities. Both feel great. Plenty of surface area on both. Interestingly enough, the 13 inch is slightly wider, about three millimeters coming at 133 millimeters across versus 130 millimeters across on the 14 inch, but both are 82 millimeters in terms of height. The keyboards are both are actually quite similar in the fact that they're using the newer generation scissor style mechanism on the key switches. So you have a decent amount of key travel while still being relatively low profile, but not ultra low profile like the butterfly mechanism uh, system that they had in a couple of generations of MacBooks, which were absolutely terrible to type on. And although both keyboards feel very tactile, comfortable to type on, for some reason the 14 inch feels a little bit more springier, has a faster coil over time, and you can kind of tell by the way the keys sound themselves. Have a listen. Moreover, you can see that we now have a full-size function row at the top of the keyboard on the 14-inch MacBook Pro versus the previous generation utilized the touch bar interface, which was really cool in the sense that you have special controls and functions based on specific applications you're using at the time, in addition to the fact that you're going to have all these extra customizable controls on the top of the keyboard, which you won't have on the newer generation and MacBook Pros, including the fact that you don't have control over your backlight brightness settings on the keyboard itself. You either have to do it on OS X using the control center interface or download a third-party application like Carabiner Elements that will remap those controls onto F5 or F6 or whatever you like. Furthermore, on the top right-hand side, you still have the touch ID slash power button on both MacBooks. Besides the fact on the 14 inch, it's a larger button, they both work and function in the same way. Moving forward, let's talk about the big upgrade that's right at face value, and that is the displays on both these two. We mentioned the size before, but 14.2 inch diagonally on the newer generation versus 13.3 inch. Both are utilizing similar display technology, liquid crystal display with LED backlit, but the 14.2 inch is XDR certified and has 120 hertz refresh rate, not to mention a higher native resolution of 3024 by 1964 giving it a PPI count of 253 versus the 13 inch display had a maximum refresh rate of 60 hertz native resolution of 2560 by 1600 with a 226 PPI count. The maximum brightness level was rated at 500 nits versus 1000 nits on the XDR display and the peak brightness level can actually go up to 1600 nits on the 14 inch which is super impressive. In person both displays look absolutely fantastic but you can definitely tell that the dynamic range, brightness levels and clarity is superior on the 14 inch both in videos hopefully but especially in person. On top of that, it's nice to have those thinner bezels on the 14 inch. Definitely looks a lot more modern, but unfortunately you do have a top mounted camera bump similar to the iPhones, which is kind of unfortunate. I wish they made perhaps the top border a little bit thicker in order to accommodate the camera housing, similar to the look that you get on the iPad Pros. Nonetheless, perhaps the biggest upgrade definitely has to be the double refresh rate of 120 hertz pro motion. Definitely nicer to watch fast moving action and sports in a that mode as well as uh, gaming becomes a, a very fluid and dynamic experience compared to a 60 hertz display as any gamer will tell you. Now let's move on to the meat and potatoes of this video and that is dealing with the M1 Pro and Pro Max SOCs from Apple. In terms of the actual transistor count uh, compared to the uh, first generation M1 found on the 13 inch which had 16 billion, you're looking at double that at 33 billion on uh, the Pro version and 57 billion transistors on the Pro Max variant of the chip. Additionally, the M1 Pro or Pro Max can go up to uh, 10 cores with 32 cores on the GPU end versus uh, you're looking at 8 core GPU, 8 core CPU on most of the variants on the original M1 chip. In terms of our specific configuration on the M1 13 inch MacBook Pro, we have the base model, so 8 core CPU, 8 core GPU, and we also have the base model version of the M1 Pro chip on the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which has eight cores comprised of six performance cores, two efficiency cores, as well as a 14 core GPU. Now, in order to understand the performance differences between the two, we're gonna take a look at a number of different benchmarks that I ran for the past couple of days. First, taking a look at the overall CPU performance using Cinebench R23. Now on the multi-core performance score, 
on the uh, previous generation, we got 7,700 points versus 9,500 points on uh, the uh, M1 Pro chip. And on the single core, both uh, scored around 1,500 points. On Geekbench 5, the M1 Pro, again, significantly higher on the multi-core performance score of scoring over 9,900 points versus 7,600 points. And both are very similar in terms of single core performance of getting around 1,700 points. In terms of the GPU performance using Geekbench Metal, the 8-core GPU found on the original M1 chip scored around 21,000 points versus our 14-core M1 Pro GPU scored around 36,000 points. Furthermore, in order to test the RAM performance, we use Amorphous MemMark and the sequential parameter at 128K, we got almost double the performance in terms of read and write measurements with the previous generation scoring around 46 gigabytes a second in terms of read versus 102 gigabytes a second. And the write speed on the previous gen was 64 gigabytes versus the newer generation memory modules scored 114 gigabytes a second. Additionally, the internal SSD read and write sequential performance has almost doubled as well. Using Blackmagic speed test, we got uh, 2 gigabytes a second write, 2.8 gigabytes a second read on the previous gen, versus the M1 Pro got 4.8 and 5.3 gigabytes a second write and read respectively. Additionally, in terms of the graphical performance, using the GFX Metal Aztec Ruins synthetic benchmark, we got an average frame rate of 93.4 frames per second on the M1 Pro a GPU versus uh, the M1 GPU scored around 55.1 average frames per second in the exact same benchmark. Furthermore, using Unigen's Valley Benchmark 1920 by 1080 at ultra detail settings, we got an average frame rate of 47.8 frames per second on the M1 versus the M1 Pro scored around 74.5 average frames per second. Additionally, if you're going to be doing any kind of multimedia video editing, perhaps using Premiere Pro, we exported the exact same 5 minute 4K 30 FPS project on both laptops and the total time it took to export that video file took around 6 minutes 56 seconds on the M1 13 inch MacBook Pro versus the newer generation M1 Pro rendered it in less than half the time of 3 minutes 17 seconds. Now, if we were to summarize all the highlights of each MacBook, starting from the newer generation 14 inch, I would say firstly, uh, the ports and connectivity options are definitely a big highlight. The speakers sound better. It has the better FaceTime 1080p camera compared to the 720p camera and the display in pretty much every ways from an experience standpoint is far better besides the fact that it does have that camera bump and the internals are significantly faster as we've demonstrated. Now in terms of the highlights on the previous generation M1 13 inch MacBook Pro, firstly you do get the uh, touch bar attachment on the top of the keyboards which is missing from the newer generation. It does have the slightly better battery performance and the fact probably the biggest one it is a hell of a lot cheaper from the base model configuration on both of these two starting from $1299 versus the cheapest version of the 14 inch starts around $2,000 $700 difference between the two which is pretty much the price of a decent Windows PC these days. I would definitely love to know what you guys think of the new generation MacBook Pros. Do you think it's worth upgrading to compared to the M1 versions? I probably don't think so, but if you're coming from a much older previous generation a MacBook or any older generation laptops, it definitely is extremely fast, rivaling the performance of really powerful desktop PCs, and definitely is a lot more convenient from a ports and connectivity standpoint, as we mentioned before, and really has minimal weaknesses compared to the previous generation design. Furthermore, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video. And if you're interested to see how this new generation MacBook Pro compares against the best offering from Microsoft with the Surface Laptop Studio, we have that comparison on the channel as well. You can check out the description to find that link. You can also find our paypal.me, which helps us support content like this. You can give us any kind of tip, anything will really help. And you can also go through our Amazon affiliate link, which doesn't cost you anything. Big thank you for your continuing support and we'll see you real soon in the next one. Take care.